the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because something is about to break open in your life. The day for rain has come. And like mighty showers, our lives are being flooded. restoration come to you grace is given to you at this hour hallelujah you are rising the strength of God in the ability of God and in the grace of God hallelujah I said hallelujah our online viewers, I want to welcome you to the fellowship we share here at the Glory Pavilion Church, Benin City, Nigeria. For you watching, believe me today, for you, it's a date with destiny. Amen. amen. Can I hear amen in the house? Amen. Our pastor, Reverend Dr. Efe Obuke, will be continuing his series. He started, The Impact of Our Giftings. And this is the third part in the series. You know what? The Bible said that the gift of a man will make room for him. I know as you listen to this message, you will discover your giftings. And as soon as you discover your giftings, you will deploy it. And your giftings will, without any doubt, make room for you. Amen. Just put your hand on your chest, wherever you are right now. And say, my gift will make room for me. And the world will celebrate me. If you're excited, give a round of applause to the Lord right now. Can we be up on our feet? Let's just go into a time of prayer. Just begin to speak to the Lord. If you have discovered your giftings, thank the Lord for your giftings. If you haven't discovered your gift yet, do not fret, do not cry. This message will open your eyes. Begin to ask the Lord. Because the Bible says Jesus gives gift unto men. So you have a gift. You have a gift and your gift is designed to make room for you. Ask the Lord, don't be silent, speak. Be specific in your asking. Oh Lord, we give you praise, my Father. Thank you for the gift in us, Father, King of glory, Lord. Give us the grace to stir up the giftings. Give us the grace to stir up the giftings, oh God. That, Father, our gifts will make room for us. And the world indeed will celebrate us. Because we've discovered the reason and the purpose of our existence. Thank you for our giftings, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless you, oh God. Because it's a wonderful time and a privilege, oh God, to be in your presence again, Lord. As we go into this message, as we journey into it, Father, King of glory, let our giftings be stirred up, O oh God. And let men begin to discover the reason, O oh God, that they have come upon the face of the earth. And let the giftings begin to make room for them, O oh God. That indeed, O oh God, they will not live an empty and a purposeless life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? Amen. With Jesus' joy, let's give a round of applause to the amazing Numa praise as they come in time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. 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 It's always a joy to come into the presence of God, bringing worship, bringing songs, bringing praise, bringing out offerings unto Him. Just open your mouth and begin to bless His name. Just offer unto Him the fruit of your lips. He's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, Hosanna to his name, he's worthy, he's our king, he reigns on high, the one that reigns on high, we worship you our king, hallelujah to you our king, oh king we lift you high, we lift you high.
you are. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. What a joy again to be here to share God's word. We're looking at something very exciting. We're talking about the impact of our giftings. And this is an awesome topic to look at. So today we're going to continue from where we left off last week. And uh, let's go to our core text again. Proverbs 18 verse 16. I really says that a man's gift makes room for him. A man's gift. Your gift. Bible says it is designed to make room for you. What does that mean? It means that your gift will create space for you. If you open doors, it will cause you to enter into places that without those gifts will be impossible to enter into. So it says a man's gift makes room for him. And not only that, the gift will bring him before great men. A gift is designed to bring about greatness, impact and influence. So, let's look at this critically. Well, one thing I know about gifts is this, that gifts are a blessing from God to us. You see, the truth is this. If we want to succeed in life and make impact and change situations based entirely on our natural abilities, we will always come short. Remember Moses. Moses had a burden for his people. He saw their slavery. He saw how they were being afflicted, tormented in Egypt. And his heart cried out for change. At some point, he was overcome with his burden and eagerly stepped out to do something about it. And we're told that Moses actually killed an Egyptian trying to free his people. But at the end of the day, he ran for his life. You see, our natural abilities are limited. There are things that normally we cannot do by ourselves. So God's gifts are God's means of overriding our natural limitations. And in that dimension of gifts, amazing things can happen. The book of Hosea, for example, tells us that, that by a prophet, that God delivered Israel from Egypt. It's not by Moses that God delivered Israel. Well, Moses as a person. It was Moses as a prophet that God used to deliver Israel from Egypt. So, the prophetic gift given to Moses completely uh, was used to override his natural limitations. So giftings are brought by God for this purpose. And as we look at scriptures, there are diverse kinds of gifts. They come in different shades, different means, and all of that. And God has determined that for the church to stand in his place of glory, it will be by the uh, the, 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 the impact of the giftings that he has put in the body. Now, let me say this, because I hear this all the time. Um, when people come to me and, this, and I, I hear them talk, I often hear people say, look, I don't know if I can be used like that. You know, when you think of the great things that God wants to do, it looks like, am I qualified for this? Are you sure that it's me that God wants for this role? I have my weaknesses. I have my shortcomings. I don't know if I'm able just like Moses, when uh, the Lord appeared to him, he said, Lord, how will I go there and show myself my face? After all that has happened, I'm a stammerer. I cannot speak properly. But brethren, we need to understand that God's gifting are purely by grace. They are gifts of grace. It's not based on who you are. It is based on divine purpose. So all things are possible to him that is available to God and believes in God. And that's the reality. Miracles happen today, and God can use you to make them happen. Gifts are endowments of God that help us to do things that ordinarily we cannot do. So it is important we understand that. So our role is to discover our gifts, identify them, and then deploy them for the use of God. I heard um, a, a brother give a testimony many years ago. He, um, he was in a place when um, a little child drowned. The child was playing apparently by where the swimming pool was. And uh, the parents and himself, they all engaged in their conversation. Why this child wandered off 
and finally got into the swimming pool and then drowned in the process. And uh, as he shared with me, he said, look, that when this child drowned and the mother found this child, the mother was so broken, was wailing, crying. And he said, so I don't know what came over me. I ran to where this uh, woman was with this child. I grabbed the child out of her hands and I began to cry from the depth of my heart. And I said, Lord, let this child live. Let this child live. He began to share with me. And before he knew what was happening, the child began to cough and began to bring out water that he had swallowed. And God restored that child back to life. That is not human. That is not natural. It's the endowment of God upon him that made that to happen. We need to be open to the gifts of God. God wants to change our world, but he must do it through men. Through men that are gifted. Men who have allowed their gifts to be discovered. And who are ready to pay the price to, de to deploy their gifts. So talking about our giftings is a very critical thing. Very critical. Our world today is waiting for men who know their gifts and are taking their place. So that is important. I want us to go to the book of Acts. I want to show you something about gifts. Acts chapter 9. If we go there and begin to read from verse 36, I want to show you something about gifts. Now here, the Bible says that now there was a Joppa, notice this, a certain disciple called Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. So the name Tabitha and Dorcas mean the same thing. Now let's read on. Bible says that this woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did. And then the next verse, Babu says that it came to pass in those days that she was sick and then died. This is amazing. We've just been told about this woman who is a woman who was a blessing, full of arms deeds. Apparently, she reached out to people. How can bad things happen to good people? Well, these, verse, these verses tell us that they do happen like that. But what is important is that we should recognize the fact that God is beyond whatever has happened. Because as we read in this story, the Bible says that she was sick and then she died. Whom, after they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. For some reason, the brethren could not let her go because of the things that she had done, what she meant to them. So they washed her and kept her in this upper chamber. Now let's follow this story because something happens. In that next verse, it says... For as much as Lida was near Joppa, Lida is another place close to Joppa, that particular place where she died. And Babu says, the disciples heard that Peter was there. Now, Peter was not the only person in Lida. But the disciples heard that Peter was in Lida. Now, what was particular about Peter? And Babu says, when they heard that Peter was there, Babu said they sent two men desiring him that he should not delay, but to come to them. Remember that those who were sending for Peter were believers as well. They are born again people who love God, who are members of the church. But for some reason, they were interested in Peter. And the reason is simple. They saw in Peter a man that had the gift that can bring a change to this situation. Because they knew that Peter was anointed by God in that area. And they knew that if Peter came, Dorcas who was so precious to them can be raised again. So they knew that Peter had a gift like that. And for that reason, they sent to him. Now, let's read on because I'm getting somewhere with this. The next verse says that Peter arose after the message came to him and went with those that brought the message, those two men. Now look at this. He says, when he was come now to them, remember he had come to them, where Dorcas was already dead, they had washed her, they had put her in that upper chamber. Babu says, they brought him into the upper chamber. They needed something from him. They knew that Peter had the gift. They knew that if he came, because of the gift in him, proven gift, that Dorcas, that beloved sister, could be brought back to life again. Wow! We need to have people who have strong gifts in their lives. They saw in Peter... A solution to that problem. But let me show you something here about the gifts of God. The Bible says that they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments 
which Dorcas had made while she was with them. They were making Peter to know how precious she was, why they could not let her just die and go away like that. It's a blessing, a real blessing. Now look at this very strange event in the next verse. Babu says, but Peter put them all forth. In other words, he told everybody to leave. And the next thing we are told here is that Peter knelt down and then prayed. He knelt down and then prayed. After which, turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And then she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. So indeed, clearly, Peter has a gift. God is using him in a particular way. And the people knew it. That was why they sent for him. Now, as we look at this thing that has happened, I want to show you something about gifts. And it's important that we understand this. Now, Peter is the one who had this particular ability or gift. And he was invited, apparently, to come and raise from the dead this dear woman who had died. In my own thinking, a man with a gift like that, and he's shown the body, what I expect him to do is to go to the body and then raise the person from the dead. But in this account, that's not what Peter did. When Peter put everybody away, we are told he knelt down. That does not sound like a man that could raise the dead. That sounds to me like a man that needed help. That needed help. The truth is this. Anything you can do, you don't need to pray. Once you have the ability to do it, if I drive my car, for example, I don't pray before I go into my car. I mean, I can pray by my life and my day to be blessed. But I just go into my car, put the car, the, the, the key into the ignition or whatever uh, uh, it is, and then I start the car and drive to where I'm going because I know how to drive. Anything that you can do, you just go and get it done. But this is not what happens here. Peter did not act like somebody who can raise the dead. He acted like somebody who needed help to raise the dead. We are told that he knelt down and then began to pray. Until he knelt down and prayed, he could not talk to the body. So whatever he did, he got from the place of prayers. What I'm trying to let you know is that the gifts of God in our lives are not gifts that we own. We don't own those gifts. We are merely conduits of those abilities. Our giftings are always tied to God. Always. Always tied to God. We always need the Holy Spirit to empower them and to make them a blessing. And that's what Peter has demonstrated here. He turned to the body only when he had prayed and knelt down before God, seeking for help and clarity and direction. So gifts work in that manner. I want to understand that. So, let's look at gifts. Like I said at the beginning, uh, there are diverse kinds of gifts. They come in different ways. And uh, we're going to talk about them as we go on with this study. Uh, I said last week that gifts are in three categories. So they are different. And under each classification, you have different gifts there. So there are three broad categories of gifts that God has given believers and under each category, there are several gifts under them. Now, let me show you the technology of how gifts are developed. Number one, gifts are given at the discretion of God. God equips people with gifts solely at his discretion. But we have a responsibility of ensuring that whatever gifting God has put in our lives becomes strong, like Peter in this case. Apparently, his gift has been so profoundly developed that people could depend on him in a critical situation like that. He wasn't the only believer, but he was a believer who had given himself in this area of his gifting, and then he can be a reliable gift in the body of Christ. Now, let me show you this. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 2, and I want to read one verse, verse 16. A judge in these times is a gift of God to the people of God. See, at this time, um, God needed to raise people that, through whom he will guide his own people. And 
As you read the Bible, God used to give such gifts. He caused some people to be prophets, some to be apostles, some to be evangelists, different people. And so in this case, God was giving Israel the gift of judges who will be able to administer direction and guidance to the people of God. So a judge is a gift by God. I want us to look at the technology of how gifts are developed in our lives. So this is an example. So verse 16 says, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. And what did they do? They delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. So judges had the ability, the capacity beyond the natural to deliver God's people. That was the grace upon them. So how did God bring about getting judges for his people? That verse says that God bringing about judges, he did them by a process that is described here as God raised. Judges did not just emerge. They were raised. So raising is a process by which a gifting in the life of a man becomes dominant, becomes strong. We are all gifted. As long as you are in the body of Christ, God's gifts are within you. But for many of us, our gifts are not developed. Our gifts are not strong. Our gifts cannot make the impact that God desires that they should make. And in this verse... We are being shown that the way giftings will emerge is that those gifts have to be raised. So being raised is the process by which a gift that will bring about deliverance and change will come into forefront. Now the big question is this. What does being raised mean? What is, what is the component of being raised? Uh, I will want scriptures to help us understand what this thing means. Because we know from this text that God brought a bad judges because they were raised. I trust God that you will allow God to raise you in different aspects of equipment that he has put in your life to make you a blessing. Now, if we go to the book of, um, of Joshua, I believe this text will help us understand what being raised is all about. Verse 26 of chapter 7, Joshua says, and Bible says that they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Let me give you a background to this story. You see, right there in Israel, there was a man called Achan. Achan had done something that was abominable. And because of that, God's anger was kindled against the entire nation. And when they inquired of the Lord and said, why are you so angry with us? It was then God revealed that a man amongst them called Achan had been in gross disobedience. And at that point in time, they found, what should we do to extinguish this, this plague from our midst? And then they were told that day that Achan needs to be killed for what he has done. But as we look at that text, the word raised is used concerning Achan here. And Bible says in that verse 26 that they raised over Achan a great heap of stones. The word raised is there. You see, the way Achan was killed, he was killed by justice of being stoned. And what they did basically was that they put him somewhere and then the Israelites began to stone him until he was dead and until a heap of stones was raised over him. That was the process of what happened. Now, my interest here is the word race. Because as you look at that word race, the Bible says that a heap of stones was raised. How did they achieve that? The Bible tells us that they stoned him and it was one stone at a time. They kept stoning him one piece at a time. One piece at a time. One piece at a time. And over the process of time, not only was he dead, but a heap of stones was raised over him. And that word raised here, described, gives us a picture of what it means to be raised in your gift. People of God, God will raise your gift by a process at a time. 
one encounter after another. That is why a life of obedience and surrender is so critical. Keep following your gift. Deploy your gift. Piece by piece. Beat by beat. Time after time. You must be persistent. One step after another. It's over time. You will discover that your gifting has become strong and emerging. Remember this Peter we're talking about was one of the disciples that denied Jesus Christ three times. But on this occasion, we see him as an apostle that the church could rely on to raise a man from the dead. In this case, a woman, Dorcas. Peter didn't get there overnight, but he kept persistently following the Lord. One beat at a time. So it is encounters with God that get us there. In every encounter, you will have a moment of separation, a moment of prayer, a moment of seeing the word of God. These are the ingredients that make up encounters. And one encounter after another in our lives will keep refining. We keep getting our gifts to be stronger. And that's when you now begin to make a difference. Remember what I've shared so far. That it is by our giftings that God can bring a change to our world. God needs men and women who have found out their giftings and are willing to pay the price to develop them. And that they cannot become channels of God's blessings. I trust God that you will yield your life to God in this way and God will make you a blessing. And let me say this. Somebody will tell me, but how do I, know I even have gifts? I don't even feel anything in my life. Let me say, tell you this. If you look at your heart, if you really desire to serve God, you will find burdens in your heart. As you go about the service of God, you'll be attracted to different things. There are things you will hate. You don't like what they are. You want to do something about them. All of these are signals of the possible giftings that are in your life. So look at your heart. What are the things you are attracted to? What are the things you love to see happen? What are the things that you hate that they are going on? These are indications of the kind of giftings that may be in your life. What is important is that we understand our giftings and deploy them. One way you can know your gifting is by seeking the Lord. He will show you and he will tell you. And one other way too is to follow divine tasks that God gives to you. When God gives you a task, it means he has gifted you along those lines. These are the ways that you can discover your giftings. Our world is waiting for men who know their giftings, who have developed their giftings, and are ready to deploy them. I believe that your life will count and you will make a difference. Why don't you at this time begin to thank God for your life and say, Father, I will not live ordinary again. I will not rely on myself. Now that I know that there are endowments in my life through which you flow and bring about change, I yield myself as a vessel. Pray for yourself at this time. I know in my hand that God is calling you and urging you to a new place of power. Begin to thank God for your life. Oh, Jesus. I pray for everybody listening to me, Father. Lord, show them their gifts. Holy Spirit, quicken their hearts. Let their giftings come into full blown and manifestation. That you will make them a blessing in this generation. That through them, oh God, there will be miracles, signs and wonders. Men will be delivered and the kingdom of God shall be established. I pray for strength in your life and grace for you to run accurately in that mighty name of Jesus. I give God thanks. Thank God for his mercy. And thank God that Jesus gave gifts in his body. Well, like you know, the beginning of this journey is when a man surrenders to Jesus. That's when you come to the gifts of God that are in his body. Right now, if you have never given your life to Jesus, you've not surrendered to him as your Lord and Savior, you have the opportunity today. Why don't you pray with me right now and say these words, mean them from your heart. Dear Father, I want to be used by you. I want to walk in your giftings in my life. Today, I surrender myself over to you and I'm asking Forgive me, O oh God, of every wrong I've done, every sin I've committed. Make me your child today. I believe in my heart that Jesus rose from the dead for me. And Lord, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for accepting me today in Jesus' name. What a joy. This simple prayer, when a man prays it, meaning from the heart, the power of God goes to create inside of them a new creation. And your new life has begun. I trust God that you keep walking in these steps and you will come to the fullness of your giftings in Jesus' name. Well, while we're talking about this, I'd like to invite you to join us at the Glory Pavilion Church. Look at the address on your screen. If it's close by where you can reach, join us this Sunday. 
who have been experiencing great times of God's glory and God's move, testimonies of God's diverse miracles and blessings. Come join us and let's worship God together and see the gifts of God in manifestation. I expect to see you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Before I leave, I'd like to pray for everyone who's giving their tithes or their offerings. You have supported this work with a seed. I want to pray for you at this time. Lord Jesus, thank you for every person who has given in faith to support this work. Their tithe, their offering, their seed faith, whatever they've given. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And I command favor to go with your life in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devourer and I command your life to flourish in the name of Jesus. What you desire, you are believing God for. I release the open doors to come your way in Jesus' name. You are blessed, healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Clearly God has called us to a life of victory. I want to urge you, walk in your gifts. Be a blessing and God will always see you as an extension through which he will manifest himself. We'll talk again later about the gifts in our lives. God bless you in Jesus' name.